Hello, so here's a, another video to follow up with the previous one where I was modeling the uh, witch cat character. This is a, another denizen you might find in the uh, an underground labyrinth or a haunted house or something like that. And I guess uh, originally from uh, classical Greece, the uh, uh, labyrinth of the Minotaur. Anyhow, uh, this time I want to stick a little bit more closely to my model sheet and I actually drew the sketch uh, in Blender itself using the new Grease Pencil tool. And I'm using it uh, a lot more closely to get the proportions, especially in these first stages, uh, this, these blocky in stages where I'm just creating basic geometry and putting it approximately in the correct, approximately, approximately in the correct place. I'm going to be going in later and doing a sculpt. In fact, I'm doing that right now. And you can see me putting in you know, the brows and the nose and all the other features. And here are the eyes. I spent some time uh, looking at other models, trying to figure out where the eyes go, about what the right size is. And uh, I've tried modeling eyes before, and I've always found it tricky to get them in just the right spot. But uh, I think I got it right on this model, and I'm kind of happy because... Uh, it's really nice when these things go right, right off the bat. You don't have to spend a lot of time fiddling with the eyes. But uh, as I was saying before, I'm trying to stay a lot more uh, close to the model, to the, uh, to the original sketch. And so I'm going to be checking it quite a few times to make sure everything's in about the right place. And, uh, and you just saw me uh, remodeling the back of the head there just to make sure everything gets in the right place. And here I am coming in with the ear. I left this to the last part of the face because ears are kind of tricky because they're very thin and I find it's very hard to model very thin objects uh, using the sculpting tools in Blender. But um, I was able to get something that worked. It's basically a uh, U shape, sort of folded over in the middle. And uh, I've been looking at some models from uh, uh, other games too and they tend to make the uh, bottom of the ears flat. Uh, rather than concave. So that's uh, what I went with here, just using the um, flatten tool to make the whole ear sort of a, a triangle shape if you look at it from a, a distance. And uh, adjusting the horns here, uh, I'm actually moving uh, the horns and the ears up a little bit uh, because the, uh, well, the ears were a little bit too low, I realized. So, um, and uh, cows, they do have their horns a little bit higher on their head, more than you would expect, so I think it uh, is reasonable to uh, move them up a little bit. Anyway, I'm done with the head and the uh, head sculpt now, so now for the rest of the body. Just uh, blocking the arms and the shoulders, and I'm going to be getting to the hands uh, shortly. Yeah, here are the hands now. I uh, take a couple of attempts at this, but uh, the, the hands I, I feel are the, the most difficult part of the body even more difficult than the head, uh, just because they are so um, precise. I mean, you have to, if the fingers are off, uh, not only do they kind of look wrong, but it's a lot hard to animate them l later on. But uh, you can see what I'm doing here. I'm starting off with a cube, and then I'm applying the subsurface modifier to it to give it a lot more uh, geometry, and then just uh, getting the fingers into approximately the right place. And what we have here, it kind of looks like a hand, but I wasn't quite sure how far to put the fingers away from each other. Uh, because, yeah, it's, it was looking a little bit wide there to me. And uh, here I am adjusting finger length. I felt the palm was a little bit too long, which is why uh, a little bit later I'm going to be using a reference to uh, fix the hand up a little bit. But uh, you can see my initial try here where I'm just sort of uh, moving the edges of the cube around to get everything approximately the right place. I'm trying to put the fingers inside the hand there a little bit. Uh, and eventually this is going to be sculpted. But um, for the uh, initial stage, it helps a lot to just stick with the geometry to make sure that it's all in the right place. And yeah, here's what I was talking about. I decided to take the Rigify Skeleton because it comes with hands already. So I figured if I just followed the bones of the hands in the Rigify skeleton, then uh, that would help me for getting my own hands in the right place. So here I am adjusting all the fingers to uh, fit the skeleton and where it has the bones. 
And here I am uh, bending the fingers so that they sort of curve to match the uh, curving curviness that comes with the uh, the default skeleton. And uh, and if you didn't catch that earlier, I deleted the original palm that I made there and replaced it with a cube that had some divisions in it too. So the hand is blocked in now. Time for the rest of the body. There's not much left, just the legs. So uh, this leg here is going to be a cylinder that has. Uh, been uh, had a subdivision at. Actually, no, wait a second. That's a cube. That's not a cylinder. Uh, but uh, as I was saying, uh, sub, once you put a subdivision on it, it certainly looks like a cylinder. And uh, there is another cube that uh, got turned into the feet. And finally, let's get this tail on here. Tails are fairly simple. Uh, basically just a tube. But um, uh, yeah, people don't have tails. So it's uh, a bit of a a little bit of guesswork to figure out how to add them into a model like this. And I guess uh, what we could say is that, you know, even if you do get it wrong, nobody really has any real reference to compare it to. So if uh, you have a fantasy Minotaur character and the tail's a little off, you can always just argue, no, that, that's what Minotaurs actually do look like. Anyway, uh, here I am joining parts of the body together so I can go into the sculpt. And we're going to be re retopologizing this a little bit later. But I'm uh, uh, cleaning up that block in a little bit, block in a little bit, and making it look a little bit more like a hand. And uh, having that underlying skeleton from the Rigify certainly helped me get my uh, proportions correctly. I should probably practice hands a little bit more. Uh, they, they are tricky to uh, get right, even if you're just uh, drawing in a traditional manner. And here are the feet. Uh, this is another part I have a lot of trouble with. I'm not uh, comfortable with hooves. I don't really know what they look like, so I'm never quite sure if I've uh, modeled them correctly. But I figure this is good enough. Uh, this is all going to be cover uh, changed into low poly anyway, so it's going to be uh, a rough combination of polygons. So uh, you can sort of get away with the polygons blurring some of your mistakes. But uh, this is a stylized character. You can see that the legs and the feet really taper down to a point. Uh, to go with the enormous head. The entire figure sort of has this big downward pointing triangle shape. And uh, okay, now I'm um, modeling in the uh, main torso of the feature, spending some time on the rear end here. Uh, it's important to get those proportions right because if uh, you don't have enough weight in the right place, the entire figure looks like it's about to fall over, especially when you have a figure like this that has such a big head on it. And um, I'm uh, just using a, the crease modifier there to give me a little bit more definition in the tail. And yeah, I've had a lot of trouble with uh, some of these sculpts in the past with uh, lumps and uh, it just not looking right. And uh, part of it is learning how to use uh, those different tools. Blender does come with a lot of different sculpt brushes and uh, learning how to use them all properly can be uh, really tricky. Uh, but uh, luckily there's lots of videos out there. I've been uh, watching lots and of different videos about how to sculpt in Blender and it's uh, really helped out a lot for me. And well, here I am uh, making my own. Or, at this point it's more just sort of documenting what I've done. But as you can see here, we've, tw we've uh, finished the block in, we have finished the sculpt, and now we're on to the retopology. So what I did here was I created, uh, actually I started with a basic plane, and then I just put it on top of the model, and I've um, switched into the mode where it's uh, snap to the snap to mode with the plane with the surface. Uh, yeah, snap into the surface so that every time we extrude a uh, new polygon from that mesh, there uh, it just goes next to goes uh, on top of the surface and next to the existing polygons. And uh, I've uh, watched some tutorials which suggest that you need to have a shrink wrap modifier too. Personally, I find that fights an awful lot with the snap mode. So what I do instead, rather than having it on the whole time, I create one, but I leave it off most of the most most of the time, and I only uh, turn it on to do an overall snap from time to time when I figure that the um, uh, retopology has started to drift away from the model and uh, it's not. Uh, sitting exactly on the surface anymore. But yeah, most of the time I'll leave it off and I'm just using the um, uh, the snapping tool to uh, keep all these vertices on the model. 
And see what I'm doing now, I'm making a whole bunch of collars uh, to uh, isolate the different parts of the model. Basically anything that sticks out should have a little circle around its base so that that part is sort of isolated from the rest of the mesh. Uh, this can help later on with animation when you want stuff to follow the, uh, to deform correctly when you have bones moving on the inside of them. But it's uh, also useful for keeping your model planned and making sure that everything flows neatly together. It uh, gives you sort of a nice clean model. And another thing I'm doing is whenever I do make a hole like this, I'm always trying to be careful to always use an even number of uh, edges on the uh, perimeter of the hole. Uh, you need to do that in order to keep things... Um, well, it helps an awful lot later because uh, it's uh, when you're doing retopology, especially for characters, it's useful to make sure each one of these polygons is a quadrilateral. Uh, or in other words, it, uh, they all have exactly four sides. Uh, th there, are, there are some limited situations where you can use triangles, but uh, generally you want to avoid them. And uh, it really helps to keep four-sided shapes if whenever you create one of these loops, you always make sure that you always create an even number of uh, segments. So that's just something I picked up in uh, the different modeling I did. But uh, see, I'm uh, going back here. I've been sort of jumping around. I got the main loops of the face done, uh, and I left the fill for a little bit later. But now you can see I'm coming back in and filling in those in-between gaps. And keeping those even numbers is certainly helping my job here. You, uh, it's really unpleasant to uh, fill in a large area like this and find out you have only a triangular shape left. Then you have to figure out how to uh, shuffle around all the other geometry so that uh, you, all, you only have four-sided shapes. But then again, maybe I am just um, focusing a little bit too much on that rule. But uh, you can see here I'm finishing up the back and uh, the rest of the body. I'm going to be going down the arm shortly. Yeah, here we go. Start off with just a loose uh, arrangement, uh, basically just a tube, and then you cut the tube into smaller pieces, and then using that shrink wrap modifier uh, to bind the mesh closely to the surface there. So it's like I was saying before, I don't have it on continuously like you, like you see in some tutorials. I just um, make a copy of it and turn it on uh, for a moment, whenever I decide the uh, retop retopology is getting a little bit too far away from um, the uh, f from the uh, underlying uh, sculpt, and here I'm going in with the fingers. I'm starting off with some separate. I think these were cylinders to start off with. I'm just positioning them in the right place uh, so that they roughly follow the uh, places where the sculpted fingers are. And then I'm using that um, shrink wrap to uh, shrink them onto the sculpted fingers. Can't say that I'm 100% happy with the way this hand turned out. I think the fingers are a little bit thin. And uh, despite having stretched the hand broadly uh, along the y-axis, uh, I still think it looks a little bit short. It would have. I was trying earlier to figure out how to create a hand with fatter fingers, but the trouble is when you do that, the fingers all bunch together and then they don't separate nicely. So yeah, I think I might need to do a little bit more hand practice before I am happy with the hands. But uh, back for the retopo, uh, you can see that those cylinders, I'm now just nudging the points around so that they form a nice little circle around the different parts of the fingers. And now for the uh, tricky part of the retopology, getting the palm in the right place. And this is really tricky because uh, you have eight edges at the wrist, and somehow this has to turn into about uh, 20 different edges if you include all the fingers and the thumb too. And just figuring out how to merge all those uh, faces together in a way that doesn't cause strange shapes and a whole bunch of triangles is not easy. But one thing that works uh, for me is basically you just start by taking those fingers straight down, or the polygons from those fingers straight down, and then what you can do is find uh, triples of vertices that are next to each other, then just merge them together. Although a lot of this is also guesswork. You just, uh, whenever you see a face that has uh, is a little bit too big, you can just sort of break it down or add in a neighboring face, 
and then uh, just try to get them together. And uh, another cheat is sort of on the uh, the right, the uh, the baby finger, baby finger side of the palm. You uh, can just putting 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 extra cuts in there sort of helps you match up the front of the hand and the back of the hand. So in the end, I think this hand worked out. Uh, it has reasonable geometry, I think. But um, yeah, it could, could maybe be better. Certainly the underlying sculpt, I would like to do a little bit more. Come up with something that is a convincing hand, but uh, it does, doesn't have such thin fingers on it. And there you can see the hand model, and now I've just joining the hand model to the rest of the retopo. And uh, that, that's a major piece of the retopology right there, just in the hand. Now, uh, going on to the legs here, uh, just extending down the form that we had there and getting everything into place. I think I uh, tried applying the shrink wrap modifier and getting horrible results because I didn't uh, do the side view. So it's just undoing that and uh, now going back in uh, I think the, the crotch area here also didn't work out too well. You can see there's a lot of long, thin shapes in there. I wasn't quite too sure how to fix that. So I just added a few more uh, horizontal cuts. I don't think it's going to be too bad, but um, yeah, th th that's another part of the body I wasn't quite sure how to design. But here we are on the feet and uh, basically just going over the top of the, uh, the feet here and a little bit on the bottom and uh, try and figure out the best way to do the toes. Now, if you look at the underlying sculpt, the toes aren't completely separate because the toes are so close to each other. So I had to play a little bit with the geometry to get that to work out properly. Uh, I think it works. I mean, we're not going to be seeing the, clothes ver the toes very close up and they don't need to wiggle independently. So. I think that this is going to work, but um, yeah, so another another part of retopology I wasn't quite sure how to work with, and uh, you can see that he's been sort of sewn into his clothes. You know, those pants are never coming off, and there's a good reason for that. It's uh, if you have clothes mo modeled separately from the model itself, uh, I, I've in the past found a lot of trouble with the body actually poking through the clothing. So one way around that is to make the clothes the part of the model. And uh, just to finish off the retopology, I have now turned off the snapping. Uh, actually, I haven't turned it off. I think I'm going to turn it off shortly. But I should have turned it off. And uh, I've uh, also uh, turned off half of the mirror modifier. So we're now inside the mouth and modeling the inside mouth cavity. And uh, this is probably the easiest way to do it. If you can just hide half the model, then it becomes so much easier to model the inside of the mouth. And the retopo is done. Now you can see I'm trying to move it into position. It's basically just down a little bit of a smidge because uh, beforehand when I was modeling it, it was a little bit too high. And now I'm creating the uh, Rigify rig. Uh, this is a bit of a shortcut too. Uh, I have done rigs from scratch before and that is a lot of work. So Rigify gives you a nice shortcut. And now here I am trying to get the uh, hand of the new rig into the position uh, where it was when I sculpted that hand in the first place. And now uh, for the job of moving the bones into the correct parts of the body. Now for most of the body, that wasn't too hard, but now for the face. Now if there is one part that's tricky about Rigify, it's this face. Uh, there are a lot of bones there and getting them into the right place can be a bit of a pain. And that's one of the reasons why I switched to stick bones. They're so much easier to move around than those uh, default octahedral bones. And uh, I'm doing a combination of side view and front view. Uh, when you're doing the bones that lie on the center, you have to turn off snapping because other, you want them to stay on the center line and you don't want them to drift from that. And snapping can really mess that up. Uh, but for the bones that aren't on the center line, generally you want them lying on the surface and for that you do want snapping on. And I'm just fixing up the foot here. Uh, foot is pretty simple and now I've just added a tail to the whole body. Uh, that doesn't come with the default rig, but Rigify comes with a bunch of extensions that let you uh, add on extra body parts like tails. And you can see here I forgot to uh, retopologize the bottom of the feet. 
So I'm just going in and uh, making a few more edits on the retopology. But uh, mostly that was just uh, some cleanup and some tweaking of uh, what we're doing before. Now, uh, and testing out the uh, rig, just uh, having character look off to the side. Now, finally, we are at the painting stage. I know a lot of uh, these tutorials tend to put the painting stage before the rigging stage. Uh, myself, I find that uh, painting is a bit of a commitment, and usually when you're in the rig uh, stage, you'll find some errors in your model and uh, you'll want to change it. So, uh, and if you do that, you pretty much ruin your painting job. So I like to get the rig uh, working first and then move on to painting. So you saw me there adding a bunch of cut lines to the model. Uh, this is basically just uh, cutting the model apart into the different flat sections that we're going to be painting and uh, going through and I'm just looking at the heat map here to identify errors in the model and there was one there inside the mouth where the um, uh, you saw that there were two vertices that should have been at the center line that weren't so I was just moving those back into place and uh, creating the eyes here the eyes are going to be a separate mesh but they're going to be using the same texture map as the rest of the body so now I'm unwrapping the whole thing, including the eyes, so that they're all on the same texture. It's also uh, changing the size of some of those. I'm enlarging the size of the pupils, I mean the, uh, the center part of the eyes, uh, which includes the pupils, but also includes a bit of the area around them, as well as the head, so that those parts of the model have a little bit extra definition. And now for the paint job. I'm starting off with the eyes, and I'm sort of mimicking those default colors that I had in the uh, uh, sculpt in the original model and uh, painting the eyes independently so that they're a little bit different, although we could have used the same uh, colors for both of them. Anyway, uh, just a quick eye, and now flood filling the uh, main body of the character with a single color, and going in and adding in some of the, uh, the fur markings. And I decided to go with green pants. I thought that was a nice contrast to the red of the rest of the body, sort of reddish brown and uh, putting in some, uh, uh, kept copying down that lighter colored fur for the underside of the body and the bottom of the feet. And uh, now just painting in some of the details. There are the toes, or the hooves, and we're gonna be uh, doing that on the horns too shortly. Uh, but first we're gonna paint the inside of the mouth. The inside of the mouth is a bit, of tr bit tricky because it is inside everything. And I think I ended up just doing a flood fill. And now putting on some details on the pants, just some crease lines so that they look a little bit like uh, blue jeans, or I guess green jeans in this case. This kind of reminds me of Captain Kangaroo. That was a show from a very long time ago with a character on it named Mr. Green Jeans. So just, just to give you an indication of how old I am. <laughs> but uh, okay, now here's the horns. And uh, putting, putting all that black on the horns and now getting the ears in there. Uh, going to be doing a little bit of detailing in the ears too. Uh, to sort of mimic the insides, the, those little uh, bumpy things that are on the insides of your ears. Uh, I don't really know what the insides of cow's ears look like, but I figured that was a good guess. And uh, now I was thinking of putting uh, a some straps or some uh, suspenders on him, but uh, in the end I decided, nah, he's, he's fine without them. So here we see the final character. Uh, I added in a few animations. Uh, so just to give a bit of a demonstration of how the character moves. But yeah, that's it. I'm hoping to use this guy in a video game too. Uh, it's all ready for export. And in any case, I hope you enjoyed watching this. Uh, I know it's not really a tutorial, but um, it, it was, it's a process. So maybe if uh, you just like watching it or you're thinking of being an artist yourself, you'll enjoy it. In any case, thanks for watching.